Once you start to edit the various containers or clips on your track that reference the original audio file on your drive, you will need to be aware that there are two types of clip. These two distinct types of clip are known as selected clips and focus clips. This difference isn't just by name, of course. There's a clear distinction between selected and focus clips in that, dependent on which type of clip being used at a particular time, certain editing functions will only be processed on an individual clip or focus clip, while others can be processed on multiple clips or selected clips. I'll just define that difference a little better. A selected clip is a clip that you have selected using any of the various selecting clips procedures. You can select more than one clip simultaneously, and when you do, you are able to edit multiple clips simultaneously using functions such as copy, delete, move, etc, etc. To help identify them, a selected clip has a different background colour, and to access related clip functions, you will need to either left or right click on the clip in a specific place. Now I'm going to show you this in action in a few moments time, but for now, know that right clicking in the top part of a clip opens the selected clip menu. By contrast to a selected clip, a focused clip is a clip that was selected, clicked or edited last. Furthermore, only one clip can be focused at one time. Right clicking in the lower part of a clip opens up the focused clip menu. OK then, that's the theory. Let's look at this in practice now. Let's look at arranging and rearranging our clips within our montage window. Now, despite the name change, we are looking at exactly the same project, the same montage, as we've been working on throughout this course so far. So, let's look at arranging and rearranging any of these clips then. With this first clip residing on our audio track 1, if I roll the mouse into the bottom half of this stereo file, then you'll see the mouse cursor takes on a separate identifier. We see that four-ended arrow just next to the mouse cursor. This means that, once I see it, I can move this clip in time, either to the left, so that it starts earlier, or moving it to the right, so it plays back a little bit later. So from its existing position, I can relocate it. Now do bear in mind that what I'm about to do won't work if I roll the mouse over and left-click in the top half of the audio file. To be able to move the clip, we need to call up this Move tool, and the Move tool appears automatically, as you can see, when we roll our mouse over in the bottom half of our clip. I'll show you what I mean if I left click here now. Well, as you can see, by dragging to the left, this moves the whole of this clip to the left, so that it will play back earlier. Now, I do want to point out that even though that clip has moved, in time as it were, the following clip hasn't moved in relation to it, and that's because I only selected the one clip. And of course, if I left click on it again and drag it to the right, then, by the same principle, any following clips won't be adjusted in time to compensate for the first clip's movement. That said, there is something else that you need to be aware of. Because subsequent clips don't move, then if I reposition the first clip, for example, so that it moves along and collides, shall we say, with the second clip, then this first clip won't suddenly mute whatever it overlaps on our second clip. What will happen is, as the two clips collide, there will be a crossfade automatically created. You don't have to concern yourself about worrying about the crossfade parameters, they will automatically be generated. I'll show you what I mean. I'll left click on this first clip and drag it so that it does merge with our second clip. So even though they are colliding, in effect, what I'm doing is I'm overlapping them and automatically creating that crossfade. And the crossfade, as you could probably work out, is that orange area, that ranged rectangular orange area, where our two clips merge together. You can see how the crossfade is going to work within that orange rectangular area because what's known as the volume envelope, and the volume envelope is the horizontal line that runs across, determining the playback volume of that particular clip. Well, that volume envelope diminishes from what it's set at at the top there, down to silence, meaning at that crossover point, however long that takes, there will be a smooth attenuation of volume of clip 1 down to silence, and the antithesis applies with clip 2 in that it starts at silence, and that 45 degree slope of our volume envelope increasing in level means that that second clip will now become audible. So, in conclusion then, clip 1 fades out, and clip 2 
fades in throughout that ranged area where our two clips connect. This crossfade area is totally adaptable and adapts in real time. If I left click on the first clip once more and drag to the left, well, as you can see, that crossfade area became smaller until we disconnected clip one from clip two. Consequently, that crossfade area, of course, now no longer exists. OK, so this crossfade is an adaptive process. Now, speaking of the volume level, as I did a few moments ago, if you do want to adjust the volume playback of an individual clip, then you need to adjust the specific volume envelope of that particular clip. This line here is your volume level adjustment. Notice as you roll your mouse over the line, then as you pretty much touch it, then we take on an additional icon next to our mouse. Now we see the symbol change to indicate that this multi-tool has now changed to a different tool. One that allows us to adjust the volume of this particular clip. Therefore, if I left click now, knowing I'm seeing this symbol, I can left click and drag down to attenuate the volume. I'll take the volume level down to minus 6 dB. That means that this clip will play back at 6 decibels below its original recorded level. That will mean, of course, if this clip hasn't been optimised or normalised, then if the loudest point of the clip recorded was at minus 3 dB, then by reducing the output level for this specific clip so that it's at minus 6 dB, then minus 6 dB, in addition to the original minus 3 dB playback, would mean if we were monitoring this on our output level meter, then the loudest point would peak at minus 9 dB. Now, of course, if I want to take the volume back up, then clicking on it once more, left click and dragging it up, increases this clip's playback level. I'm going to take it up to 0 dB, i.e. optimum level. OK, so with this multi-tool function, you can see we can drag our clip to the left or to the right so that we can rearrange whatever we've got so far. Or, as we've seen also, we can adjust the volume playback of individual clips. I'll just move down to my second track now, the narration track. As you can see here, I've also got a couple of clips on this track. Remembering, of course, originally this is one audio track, separated or split into various clips. What I'll do is I'll show you how we can reposition or swap the original position of these clips. I'll come over to the second clip, and if I left click, bearing in mind I need to go down to the bottom half of the clip, left click there and drag to the left, well, as you can see, as our two clips collide, we now see that automatically created crossfade area. But as I keep dragging over to the left, then you can see it's very easy to reposition so that this clip originally positioned second can be moved so that it is now positioned first. I'll redo that in reverse. I'll left click on here once more. I can now move it back to wherever I want it to be. In this case, because it's narration, it really does need to follow the first clip. OK, so that's how easy it is when we want to reposition a clip. Now, I'm going to leave this tutorial here. In the next tutorial, we'll continue by looking at how we can edit these clips in various different ways. See you in a second.